a very significant aspect of school administration is the understanding of uh, the extent of and the nature as to the rights of students. Foremost, a student, each student has the right to quality education. Educational institutions do not only have the obligation, the contractual and moral obligation to deliver instruction, but our constitution uh, assures that the instruction that has to be delivered in both the private and public schools is uh, one which is of quality. Each student has the right to expect quality education on all levels as a guarantee, a fundamental guarantee of our law. According to Father Joaquin Bernas, a prominent constitutionalist, this uh, domino effect of um, the effectiveness of the school system in its delivery of quality education is felt as rippling from basic education to professional education. Quality education makes sure that basic edu education is really solid because if it is not solid, it affects the quality of secondary education. If secondary education is poor, then the person goes to college and prepared for college work. And if he is allowed to graduate again with a poor quality of quality, uh, poor quality of college education, he goes to the university professional education even more unprepared. The rippling effect um, finds its truism in the idea that basic education is for most of greatest, the greatest significance in the several level of education because it is foundational. If you have a very poor basic education background, it finds its ultimate effect when we reach higher education. There are some things that is difficult to undo. There are some things that are difficult to undo, especially when um, we have been convinced and inculcated in our minds with the idea of wrong concepts and premises in basic education. Okay. That's why basic education instructors, teachers in the basic ed play an important role in honing students to be prepared for higher learning. Because if basic education is poor, it reflects to the quality of receptiveness and education or output of students in the secondary level and eventually in the tertiary as well as in the professional levels. In the Constitution, in Section 1 of Article 14, the law provides that the state shall protect and promote the right of citizens to quality education on all levels and shall take appropriate steps to make such education accessible. This is the constitutional guarantee. Because it is a constitutional guarantee, all laws, legislations, government policies and direction as to education must respect this fundamental premise and expectation. In the case of UST versus uh, Pepanio uh, on justifying the um, government regulation on education in relation to quality education, the Supreme Court held that government regulation in this field of human activity is desirable of protecting not only the students but the public as well from ill-prepared teachers who are lacking in the required scientific or technical knowledge. Thus, for members of the faculty, the state may require or guarantee 
the assurance of the minimum qualification for those who are allowed to teach. Not only for the basic ed that requires the licensure examination and in the second, uh, secondary level, but for the higher education where a certain degree of education is required for full-time faculty members who may be required to um, have their master's or graduate school degrees. In the case of um, Dex versus San Diego, this is a case which uh, we have often repeated. Uh, the Supreme Court in this case, if you recall, magnified on the um, qualification of students who are supposed to join certain fields, like in the law school, there was the field set. For the med school, there was the requirement of the NMAT. There, they had the three-flank rule that for students who fail to pass the NMAT on the third take, uh, there may be consequences as to the qualification to the entry of uh, students to the medical school. The right to quality education invoked by the private respondent is not absolute because according to the Supreme Court, you cannot force circular or square pegs into circular holes, especially in this case where um, what is at stake is the health and safety and the lives of patients of would-be doctors who may be lacking in aptitude and capacity to be medical practitioners. Every citizen has the right to choose a profession or a course of study subject to fair, reasonable, and equitable admission and academic requirements. While the Supreme Court, as with many of us, do not um, condescend on people who may fail to qualify for certain specializations in schools, no? the matter is, uh, the, or the thing is that we always fit somewhere. While we may not fit in the medical field, field or legal profession, maybe we can best be more effective in other professions like in the sciences, in engineering or in business or in the arts because we always fit somewhere. Alongside the right to quality education is the right to the accessibility of education or of a student to education. The same provision in section one of article 14 that guarantees um, quality education also guarantees of accessibility. Under the constitution, access to education on all levels does not guarantee, however, free higher education. While there is a promise to allow education to be accessible for all, it does not guarantee free education for college in the constitution. In the constitution, let me qualify that. Because in the basic education, section two of article 14 says that the state shall establish and maintain a system of free public education in elementary and high school levels. There is the guarantee of free basic education for the primary and secondary levels. That is why we have public schools in each city, for example, or in each municipality that caters to um, students in such uh, education levels, no? uh, public elementary and public high schools. They are all over the country. And in the previous discussions, we mentioned of the statistics, no? uh, which uh, would show to us that there truly still is a lack of classrooms in the public school that is augmented by the availability of such facilities in the private schools. While there are private schools which require for um, students to pay, free education is guaranteed, however, in uh, basic education, in grade school or high school, and in the basic education or primary education level. Um, in international law, 
what is primarily guaranteed is uh, primary education no? as free uh, in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the International Covenant on Economic and Social Cultural and the Cultural Rights. Supreme, uh, the international laws or conventions guarantee of elementary education. According to the Udhar, education shall be free at least in the elementary and fundamental stages. Elementary education shall be compulsory. So among the rights of the child is free education. If you remember the nar narration on the rights of the child. In the International Covenant for uh, Economic and Social Cultural Rights, still there is an emphasis on elementary education. Primary education shall be compulsory and available free for all. So it's not only free, but under the law, compulsory for, us, uh, for so long as we refer to primary education. But our constitution brings it a step higher because it is not only primary education that is free, but similarly, uh, secondary education. What about for the tertiary? While it is not constitutionally guaranteed, it is uh, provided for by legislation. Statute allows for free education. You have the um, Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education Act approved on um, August 3 of 2017. This has been the banner law for politicians who wants to get uh, the vote of the youth no, no? of the education sector, RA-10931. RA-10931 uh, guarantees eligibility to free education in state universities and colleges or SUCs and LUCs for all Filipino students who are either currently enrolled or shall enroll in SUCs for as long as they qualify uh, with the admission and retention requirements. Um, <clears throat> I remember um, for this law, there was so much worry on the part of private schools because uh, private schools may be forced to shut down uh, if this becomes too effective because there would be many who would transfer to free state universities, no tuition fees in state colleges. Um, in uh, the LG of Davao City, they even offer um, scholarships you know, for um, the med school and even the law school, not only for college. But this law, RA10931, provides for um, free tertiary education for as long as you are qualified. Uh, one worry on the other hand is on the public schools because of this law biting more than what it could chew because many may qualify but only a few may be catered given the limited resources of the state. So again, the partnership of the private and public uh, sectors here come in. Um, because uh, the state may provide for scholarships or vouchers for college students who wants to go to private schools. For, for private education, accessibility does not mean um, that such private schools are disallowed to require additional qualifications. Because while there is free access to education, again, you can only access it if you are qualified. Because it is not for all, no. If uh, we are referring to private schools, for private schools, um, while in, entrance examinations may be permitted, the trend now it is more is that it is they are more of diagnostic to guide the student into the uh, field of specialization, wherein he may be most fit to enroll for college, or to allow students to. Um, be given a preliminary evaluation through the entrance examination so that the students may be appropriately um, designated or identified as to their special needs. But there is no prohibition for, for entrance examinations for qualifications for private schools. For us, for as long as, in, like in the previous discussions, that for as long as such requirements of the entrance examination are seen in published materials of the private schools.
Um, again, the case of Republic or Dex versus San Diego. Again, accessibility and quality of education is only available in the tertiary, especially for those who are qualified. Tuition fees. Of course, when you go to the public schools, they may allow for free public education because they are state-funded. But private, private schools have no public allotment. Um, private schools are funded from the lifeblood of such schools, which are the tuition fees. While tuition fees may be regulated by the state, the undeniable truth is that private schools may collect tuition fees. In the case of uh, St. Joseph's College, Supreme Court said at the outset, let it be clear that this court understands the plight of private schools and their need to support their operation from tuition income. Um, they do not only, um, private schools do not only educate, but they also employ, they educate the young. There's a need to provide facilities for them, classrooms, amenities, but undeniably, they need instructors. As such, private schools are also employers and there is a need to pay for the salaries of private school teachers. That is why tuition fee may be collected, but they are regulated by law. Um, in the college, for example, before a tuition fee increase is executed by the private schools, as we will be discussing in another lecture, um, several requirements of notice and uh, public notice and public um, uh, fora or forum um, or involving key sectors in the school uh, must take first place. Public consultation or community um, school community consultation. Um, in fact, in fact. Uh, the schools can in fact uh, refuse students, private schools can in fact refuse students uh, who fail to pay their tuition fees. Okay. Another issue of accessibility, especially during the pandemic, is digital poverty, where because of the lack of access to the internet, perhaps because of how expensive the internet plans may be, uh, but also um, on the matter of the availability of signals, no? signals um, in some areas or localities, it may be difficult to um, uh, for students to comply with online learning. But again, there is a constitutional provision in Section 10 of Article 16. We call this the Braid Provision by Florangel Rosario Braid. She is the proponent for, for this. The state shall provide the policy environment for a full development of Filipino capability and emergence of communications structure suitable to the needs and aspirations of the nation and the balanced flow of information into and out of or, or across the country. So as from this provision, it may be an incentive for Congress to come up with legislation which would guarantee better internet connectivity. Well, from my readings, I, however, have discovered that because perhaps of um, policies in the previous administration, in the last two years, um, the services um, <coughs> costs for the internet, the use of the internet, as well as the bandwidth has increased during the pandemic. That is why you can compare the signal of our known telcos in the Philippines from two years or three years ago. It has a, undeniably greatly improved. But still, much remains uh, to be desired. Another right of the students is the right to be fairly evaluated in Section 
16 of BP 232 or the Education Act, every teacher shall render regular reports on performance of each student um, and to the uh, parents no? or guardians. They should allow uh, transparency not only for the students, but also for the guardians, especially for the minors. The purpose is, of course, while the schools have uh, substituted parental authority, the ultimate persons responsible for the education of the youth would be the parents or the guardians themselves. And students must be fairly appraised of their performances because uh, if they lack the appraisal, they may not see uh, on what areas they need to refocus on. In uh, a U.S. case, Texas Pacific versus Robertson, um, the Supreme Court of uh, the U.S. Um, had this to say that, well, it's um, an obligation that the schools and the teachers ha have to inform the students of their performances and they should not wait for the parents in fact to inquire as to the status of their children they should in in this context um, already inform students and the school uh, the, the parents of the academic status of their children even before inquiry is made um, ab absent any jurisprudence on the matter the U.S. jurisprudence on this may serve to be um, in, uh, convincing no? or uh, maybe a source of um, the policy. No? Under the Code of Ethics for Professional Teachers, among the uh, obligations of teachers is that a teacher has the right and duty to determine the academic marks and promotions of learners in the subject or grades he handles, provided that such determination shall be in accordance with the generally accepted procedure of evaluation and measurement. Meaning, there is an expectation from teachers to be fair as to their grading system or in their evaluation. Um, some teachers may have missed out on this and they... Uh, simply are too over eager to flunk students for um, for for basis on grading which are not known to the students or if known are too rigid for the year level over the academic level of the student. Um, teachers for me should be there to evaluate the students without the premise that the students are expected to fail. Uh, wala naman siguro ang teacher na ganyan. Kung meron man baka, I do not know. But teaching is a passion. It's not only a profession. And as far as I know of teachers, um, that passion gives them ultimate concern for their students. That's why when they evaluate their students, they should do so um, on uh, accepted norms of grading. The Code of Ethics for Professional Teachers uh, continues that under no, no circumstances shall a teacher be prejudiced or discriminate against a learner. So a teacher should not discriminate against a learner in such a way that his grades will um, be compromised. No? For example, a student being discriminated because of his gender preference um, or political inclination or religion. A teacher shall not accept favors or gifts from learners, their parents or others in their behalf in exchange for requested concessions, especially if undeserved. So uh, this is uh, the rule against bribery of teachers. A teacher shall base the evaluation of the learner's work only in the merit and quality of academic performances. Yung iba kasi, uh, we know naman for a fact that 
may nagbebenta naman talaga ng tickets at saka other items to the families, parents or, or of the students. And that somehow translates into better grades, ano? Um, that idea that you can um, <coughs> um, give bonuses to students for uh, complete attendance or being the middle of a class, you have to consider that unless it is for values education, only academics would be the basis for the grading. Under BP232, the basis for the grading or evaluation must be from academic performance. Every teacher shall refrain from making deductions in the student's scholastic rating for acts that are clearly not manifestations of poor scholarship. Okay? So, penalizing a student because he failed in a competition, in a sports competition, in a class that is not physical education, that is prohibited. Or giving undue advantage to students who bought tickets or who may have donated paint or sand and gravel or cement during um, uh, the preparatory stages of the um, of the opening of schools. No? For basic education, you have that ed order or the, the, the debt ed order, which is um, the manual of regulations for private schools, that the basis of the grades or rating of a student should be based only on academic performance. That's the same emphasis for basic ed. Also for uh, tertiary education, only for academics. Attendance is not a basis for grading or participation in sports activities if it is not a PE class. Okay? The right to access and the confidentiality of uh, records. Um, you have the right to privacy under RO, RA 10173. The right to access of uh, a student's record is in BP 232 must be uh, also accompanied with the right to the privacy of such records. Um, for example, okay, first, the access of records. Uh, a student must always have the right to go to the teacher to know his academic records or go to the registrar's office and ask for a copy of his uh, grades, no? which is the basis for future qualifications for employment and whatnot and or promotions to the higher year level, for example. That is not only the right of the student, but the student has the right also that the school assures that his private academic records remain private, meaning you cannot allow for background checks, for example, of your alumni. Uh, some, it's a, a common modus of some call centers that are into data mining, that they will call registrar's office, for example, of each school and ask for a list of graduates or students in a certain course, their contact numbers, and then their addresses. Or, well, that's dangerous because um, what could happen is um, they may sell your personal information, your students' in personal information to insurance companies, to uh, uh, medical suppliers, hotel hotels. No, they may sell those personal information. That's why or credit card companies. No, that's why there are, for example, these types of companies who would call these alumni because uh, they got their information from the schools, offering such credit cards or hotel services and whatnot. That is precisely what is prevented in RA 101-73. So it's actually a crime to give out this data without the consent of the students or alumni. Um, when, a students when the students request for <laughs> grades or academic records, actually schools have up to 30 days from the date of the request to release such records. In many schools, we release it in a week or two. But actually, we have one month, one month that the law allows 
uh, for schools to release such records. So if you think the registered services of a certain school are too lousy because they only release the records after five days or seven days or two weeks, think again because the law allows for 30 days. I I get hurt with this no, personally because sometimes um, clients would go to our office and demand make an issue about our five-day waiting period or one-week waiting period when in fact in other schools they would take a lot longer especially in the public schools um, but waiting period is allowed and tolerated under BP232 because BP232 was 30 days uh, the accessibility of these documents are premised on the prompt submission of the members of the faculty of their evaluation and grades. So if, um, uh, if students or alumni request for their grades, um, there is um, a concomitant obligation also of uh, before the, uh, the, the collected grades are given by the faculty members on time also. Because if, for example, graduation, promotion, or job opportunity is lost because a teacher fails to give his grades on time, it is not only the teacher that is liable, it is also the school. The negligent act of a professor who fails to observe the rules of the school, for instance, by not promptly submitting a student's grade, is not only imputable to the professor, but also to the school being his employer, command responsibility. So you have to tell your teachers to submit their grades on time because the school and the teacher shall be equally liable if there becomes losses of opportunities because of your late submission of grades. The right to use school facilities. Uh, students have the right to use school facilities in their curricular and co-curricular activities. This is a matter of public policy and contract because if you recall from previous lectures, we mentioned that when the student enrolls in day one, he is considered your student until the day of graduation. That's why in the interim, during vacations and some breaks, they do not stop becoming or they do not stop being referred to as your students. Um, the continuity of their access to education means supposedly um, their continuity of access to school facilities. Um, I think that's a good policy because we would rather have our students in campus during vacation or some break than then them getting into certain things you know, which uh, the school may in fact even uh, cannot tolerate. No? So I, please try to, observe, try to think of that policy of opening your schools to students even during the same break. It, however, it may have some implications on your budget because it may mean opening the facilities, air conditions, um, light, and whatnot. Um, right to redress. Um, the right to redress is that uh, it means that students have the right to air out their grievances against fellow students and in fact against the school. Because um, when the student enters the school, is enrolled in the school, the Supreme Court in the US, which is also recognized in the Philippines, do not uh, recognize that Students do not share their constitutional rights to redress grievance or expression when they enter into the school gates. They do not shed their constitutional rights of freedom of speech and expression at the school gates. That's why they are allowed to redress their grievances. They have the right to stay in school. It means that they can continue in their course they're in up to graduation except in cases of academic deficiency or violation of school policies or disciplinary regulations. So when, <coughs> when a student <laughs> is enrolled on the first day of school or in the first year of the school, first level of entry, he is uh, uh, you, your student until he graduates, unless he flunks or unless he drops out or is disciplined with dismissal or expulsion are temporarily not permitted to come to school because of suspension. Okay. But the right of the student to enroll or be admitted in school because of enrollment extends up to graduation. 
Again, the limitations <laughs> for all levels, primary, secondary, and tertiary. The limitation of the right to be in school until graduation is academic is limited by academic delinquency, lumagpak, violation of school rules and regulations, and of course, the closure of the school. That's the limitation to the right to be in school until graduation for all levels. For the tertiary, the following are also included. When you fail to settle your tuition and other fees, illness and other diseases also, you find that in the Manual of Regulations for Private Education. Of course, it's, this refers primarily to private education because of the mention of vision fees. Okay. Right to speech, expression, and of the press. Well, according to the Constitution, no law shall be passed abridging the freedom of speech, expression, or of the press. No person shall be detained solely by reason of his political beliefs and aspirations. You cannot gag a student and um, expect them to be robots to blindly speak of what the school advocates for. Allow, allow them to freely express themselves. Because um, if you have a student body that is um, multicolored, multifaceted, inclined to different things, vocal, open, critical, then you may have already succeeded as a school. Because the school is a place of dialogue. The school is, our schools are, a, are places of free expression. Diba? Um, and research. You know? Do not gag your students unless their expressions are contrary to public policy, law, morals, and good customs. We cannot tolerate them as students for speaking or expressing themselves in vulgar ways or in uh, ways that may, in, you know, be affront to decency. You no, know? so especially for private schools that are conservative, speech as part of the freedom includes coarse speech only. Um, sorry, coarse speech means. Those that advocate for religion, political aspirations, social uh, ideals, they, they are not free to speak of anything. Uh, they are only to speak out on matters that are included in those core expressions, politics, religion. Yung pina, I mean, that's the most conservative way of understanding this. But many would say any expression, but that's absurd. Students cannot just say anything, even... Um, insubordinate expression um, or um, subversive expression, they cannot be tolerated. It includes all forms of expression, written, oral, print, and even symbolic. So if you have students wearing all black because they protest um, against the fac a faculty member or against a school policy, and just allow them to wear black. That's part of their symbolic expression. Um, Academic freedom is not an excuse to gag students because um, academic freedom is subservient to free expression. Free expression is a higher right than academic freedom, except when such expressions are obscene, vulgar, indecent, gross, and sexually explicit. They may not be tolerated. How about during protest? Um, the school has the right to um, regulate or penalize expression that are insubordinate. Huh? Expressions that are peaceful. For example, if done even in a demonstration or picket of students, for as long as they are peaceful and done within the parameters of decency when they do not injure people or malign other students, um, they may be tolerated. But for such demonstrations, as in this case of um, Lukop versus uh, San Carlos, the demonstrations were far from, were far from peaceful. Um, so therefore, the school had the right to initiate investigation and eventually penalize students. Um, can you prevent students from being too strong in their expression, especially during rallies? No, no, you cannot. Because during rallies, 
um, rallyists or picketers, especially student leaders, are hardly timid according to the Supreme Court. Uh, they are likely to be assertive and dogmatic. They would be ineffective if during a rally they speak of guarded and judicious language of the academe. They can sometimes tend not to be too polite during pickets. Just let them because you cannot expect naman them to be friendly when they have their grievances. For as long as they remain peaceful, if they are strong in their expression but not vulgar, not insubordinate, um, just allow them expression. They, they are strong because they have grievances to, uh, that they desire to be addressed. Uh, a rally is, is supposed to be that. It's not a rally. It's it's a parade. If it's a, if it's too friendly. So, um, the schools um, must are given the uh, leeway to determine what is disorderly and not. Um, if a, an assembly of students in a rally has become too violent, too insubordinate, too vulgar, um, while the school may exercise tolerance, they are not expected to be fully tolerant. If uh, there is already a violation of school policies, then investigation and penal penalization may subsequently follow. <coughs> As to the matter of repress in campus, you have RA 7079, and not providing for the development and promotion of campus journalism and for other purposes. Um, the policy of the state is clear to uphold and protect the freedom of the press and the at the campus level and to promote the development of and growth of campus journalism as a means of strengthening ethical values, encouraging critical and creative thinking, and developing moral character and personal discipline of the Filipino youth. So it is uh, in respect for their freedom and also with regard to the development of the students through campus journalism. Uh, a student publication is uh, pub published by a student body through an editorial board and a publication staff composed of students selected by fair and competitive examinations. Once it is established, its editorial board shall freely determine the editorial policies and manage it, its own direction, of course, in its policies and, of course, its funds. Um, the security of tenure. Uh, a member of a school publication should um, be protected against expulsion or dismissal. So if a student, uh, if um, a member of the press in in the student journal um, is expelled from school on the basis solely of what he has written that is not violated of school policies, then that dismissal or expulsion or suspension is uncalled for, it's illegal. Freedom of expression through fashion. A fashion is not part of freedom of expression unless it is symbolic. Wearing of black, ribbons, but if it's plainly fashion, it does not. It is not part of core expression, and that's not necessarily part of the protected speech. Right of association. The right of the people, including those, in, okay, uh, for, to join associations, is guaranteed in the constitution. As such, students equally have this uh, <laughs> right. The right to form. Is, establish and join and participate in organizations and societies and societies recognized by uh, the school to foster their intellectual, cultural and spiritual, physical growth and, and development or form, establish, join, maintain organizations and societies for the purposes not contrary to law. So they may join such associations, some fraternities, uh, sororities, clubs, orgs, they may do so for as long as these organizations were formed not contrary to uh, the law or not for illegal purposes or those that are against the uh, general direction of the school. Like if, if you have a school that is Catholic or run by nuns, you cannot expect um, such doctrines that are anti-Catholic to be um, the very 
ano basis for the organization's existence right to religion this is a uh, primary uh, the right to faith is an unnegotiable an non-derogable right no law shall be made respecting the establishment of religion etc etc you have that in the constitution and that uh that religious freedom in the constitution uh is practically guaranteed on the freedom to believe or not to believe you cannot compel a student in school to believe or not believe in a certain faith um because that is part of uh their freedom of religion the right to actualize or manifest his religion by a student is also protected for as long as such manifestation is not contrary to law public order public policy see if you have a religion that you believe in Satan and you do human sacrifice, that's something that cannot be tolerated in schools, of course. But if your manifestation of religion is um, uh, not contrary to law or morals, then of course it is permitted because religion and the free exercise thereof is guaranteed under the law. Religion in four public schools may be taught. Um, well, there is a separation between the church and the state and the freedom of religion and the non-expenditure of public funds to any religion or church, public schools may be allowed to teach religion subject to the following limitations. There is an express written option by the student and the guardians. Of course, there is consent no? by the guardians and the students. It is taught within <laughs> regular school hours, meaning students are not required to stay after school. Instructors are... Uh, designated and approved by the proper religious societies or authorities, meaning they are persons of authority in the church. And of course, they, there is no additional cost on the part of government because government cannot... It's already promoting a religion if you spend for uh, a religious education in a public school. But in private schools, because there is no compulsion to study in a private school, it's a matter of contract. So if you go to a public, private school, religion may be taught. Like if you go to Ateneo or UI University of the Immaculate Conception in Davao City, where they teach theology, you will be compelled because you know beforehand that religion is taught in those schools. So you may be compelled to join and you will fail to graduate if you fail to pass those subjects. Like if Catholics go to New Era University, they will be required also. No? If they are, they may be required uh, to study the teachings of um, the founder uh, of the religion in INC, uh, uh, Felix Manalo. Most uh, is, he, is he addressed as most reverend or uh, uh, it's uh, the, uh, the most esteemed and respected founder of the religious uh, church or the church, which is the INC. Um, between religion and, okay, this one, flags, the flag salute case, division superintendents versus, uh, Ibranilag versus division uh, superintendents. In this case, members of a certain religion, I think that the Jehovah's Witnesses, um, were, um, uh, were compelled to salute the Philippine flag and they opposed because this is against their faith. So this case, can members of a certain faith be excused from the flag ceremony or salute the flag? The Supreme Court said yes. Of course, because religion is a primary non-negotiable, non-derogable right. Uh, for as long as when the flag is being raised during the flag ceremony, they do not disrupt or ridicule or what, no? Distract, disrupt the ceremony. They just keep silent and they may be excused from the same. Right against abuses, uh, child abuse. Um, schools must be very cautious against 
child abuse, which is the maltreatment of whether habitual or not of a child, which result from psychological or which is manifested in the following, psychological and physical abuse, any act by deeds or words which debases or degrades uh, or demeans the child, unreasonable deprivation of the basic needs or failure to immediately give medical attention. Um, if a student, a minor, no, a minor, uh, happens to succumb, uh, get an, get injured inside the campus, attend to him immediately, because your failure to give med immediate medical treatment may be translated as child abuse. Penalizing or corporal punishment may be translated into child abuse. Psychological and physical abuse may come in the form of insults or may come in the form of pamalo. No? Uh, it's too general. Deeds or words which the basis degrades or demeans. Um, I remember before when we were young, we were punished severely in school, no? disciplined severely. No? In certain cultures abroad, in Africa, I think they allow students to be, you know, even in front of the parents, paluin sa kamay. Uh, but in our jurisdiction, that may be already child abuse. Uh, sexual abuses, the Anti-Sexual Harassment Act, um, in work education and training, uh, it's committed by a teacher, instructor, professor, coach, trainer, or any person having moral authority or ascendancy. Um, it's... Um, it's the protection, no? the protection done <coughs> or guaranteed against one who, by one who is under the care of another or one whose education and training is entrusted to the offender. Um, and there is a sexual favor made as a condition for the passing of a grade, granting honors, scholarships, payment of stipend, etc., when the sexual advance results in an intimidating, hostile, or offensive environment for the student. These are yung mga sexual favors. Okay. Right to due process. This is the right to be proceeded accordingly. So when a student commits a wrong, he must be given due process. Uh, these are the minimum parameters for due process. Student must be informed in writing as to what is complained of against him. They have the right to answer the complaint, be informed of the evidence under the, against them. Uh, they have the right to produce evidence, and uh, you know due process. This nar narrative, no. If you notice in the list, there is no requirement for confrontation, you know, face to face, because the school environment is too small for such a confrontation, um, we may be exposing students to bullying or an environment that is hostile if we allow the complainant and the person complained of to be in one room for confrontation that is not allowed or uh, ob obligated by uh, in schools. So practically, um, that is... Uh, that is um, the list of the basic rights of students are actually more. There are actually more. For example, the right to the accessibility of records includes the right to the accurateness of records. So if you commit an error in the computation of grades, the students under the Data Privacy Act have the right to such a correction immediately made in these records. Otherwise, it may be subject to some criminal liability. That's why grade corrections must have some sort of mechanism in your schools, no? Um, well, whatever liability, not necessarily criminal, by the way. Um, especially if, because of your wrong competitions, a student loses opportunities for scholarships, employment, and whatnot, or graduation, uh, when in fact he should graduate. So be mindful. Ask your faculty members also to be mindful of their obligations to um, be accurate in the giving of grades or to respond immediately to grade corrections. And your schools have to have a mechanism to correct grade errors. Because anyway, like in the higher ed, I think you have a year yata, one year before uh, uh, to correct grade errors. 
I think um, there, there are mechanisms. No? While schools are under the obligation to report within 45 days in the higher ed, no, for example, to submit their promotional reports, corrections can still be made within an, uh, a year after that. Okay, thank you for listening. I hope you have learned something from this video and I hope to see you again on the next.